Hello listeners and welcome to another episode of Love is Everywhere, the podcast. The show where I give comedians assignments of things that are supposed to make you happier. And then we talk about it and we find out how it went. Today's guest is John Mostyn. Welcome back, John Mostyn. Uh, this is the first episode that we've had with a repeat guest. Felt like talking to a friend. I feel like we're all feeling that way. Uh, it was a lovely episode. We're talking about the book The Artist's Way. Uh, this is a book that has been mentioned on many past episodes of the podcast, but I've never done uh, an assignment that was specific to this book. I've pulled little things from it from for assignments before, uh, but this assignment was him doing the program. Um, you'll, you'll hear details. I'll explain how it all goes in the actual episode, but um, if you are feeling kind of stuck creatively at this moment, uh, this might be a really good episode for you. This kind of thing is all about uh, sort of reawakening the creative part of your brain, getting over writer's block or whatever kind of art it is that you do and whatever that kind of block is called. <laughs> but in any case, if you want to support John Mostyn, you can follow him on social media at Mostyn Comedy. Uh, you can check out his wicked quarantine mohawk on Instagram. He's really rocking the quarantine haircuts, let me tell you. Uh, if you want to support this podcast in general, you can give us a like. You can rate us. Uh, I want to know how I rate. Am I? Or do you feel five stars about me? How do you feel? Tell me your feelings. Maybe tell me your feelings in a review. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done that already. I would like that. Um, you know, tell your friends <laughs> if you're if you're talking to your friends at this moment. Tell tell them over your next Zoom call. You know. Um, or maybe in person from six feet apart. I don't know. Things are starting to open up. I don't know what it'll be like when you're listening to this. In any case, uh, also, if you want to follow me on things, you can follow me at, at Hamiltrace. Um, if you want to, I don't know, see what I'm up to during this quarantine time. Um, how, how my dog is enjoying her many, many naps. There's a lot of photo documentation of that on my Instagram. Um, and in the meantime... Please enjoy this episode with John Mostyn. Hello. Hello, John Mostyn. <laughs> Hello. Hello, how are we? I'm good. good, how are you? Good, have we is this started right away? We're right on? Yeah, we're just right in it. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Great. So <laughs> let, let's start with our honest how are you. So how are you for real? I'm very good. I'm very well. I just went to, for a cycle down by the lake. Uh, it was nice. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling good. That's good. Your room looks good. You've done some redecorating. Yeah, I got some. Uh, I got rid of a bunch of. I got some plants. I got some sheets on my bed. <laughs> <laughs> got a new bed. Congratulations. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally, after almost four years, I got there. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Welcome back to the podcast, I should say. Yeah, thanks for having me. Welcome. Uh, yeah, you're the, the very first repeat guest that we've ever had. What an honor. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Happy to have you. So uh, your assignment for the week was that uh, you had to do the artist's way. I did. So, uh, if the listeners don't know about the artist's way, um, how would I explain it? It's like a creative recovery program. So uh, you have to do uh, different assignments through the program. It's a 12 week program. So it, it's one book, uh, but there's 12 chapters and you read one chapter each week. And each week they give you different questions that you have to answer, uh, different tasks for the week, as well as a couple of things that are ongoing through the program. So those would be uh, the morning pages, which you do as like, it's just three pages of stream of consciousness writing every morning for three pages. And then uh, every week you have to take yourself on what she calls an artist state. Uh, so that's just a little bit of background about the program. Uh, so yeah. this would be your second week in the program? Is that yeah. right? Just getting to the end of the second week. Um... So yeah, so yeah, you're right. That's exactly what the artist way is. Julia Cameron. This is a book that's uh, been around for I guess thirty odd years, and pretty much like everyone who, every successful person, has always mentioned this book as uh, 
the, the front of the book actually says a spiritual path to higher creativity, which mm. I think sums it up perfectly. Um, almost feels like, um, I mean, she does talk about this in the book. It's almost like a, not quite, but like similar to like a 12 step recovery program for alcoholics is like, yeah. this is a recovery program for people who are creatively blocked. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, it's like a way to to reawaken your creativity. So if you're in a place yeah. where you're feeling really stuck or really uninspired, you've got writer's block, whatever it is, uh, you're just having trouble accessing that artist part of yourself. Uh, this yeah. is supposed to kind of restart uh, your creative brain. Yeah, and it's also, um, I think like, you know, there's, there's a certain, I, and I've seen this with people, is like there's certainly different, periods in your life where maybe you go back to this book because maybe for a certain chunk of time you were doing some one thing and then now you're take, tackling on another thing and you've got the same fears and insecurities about starting a new project um but yeah it's it's amazing and I, I i i found this i can't remember how i found this book but i remember when i found this book i was like I, I got it for you and I told everyone else. I was like, everyone needs to read this book. This, this is a, a but I, I'll be honest, I, the, the first time I read it, I didn't, it's, it's a 12 week thing, a program, but I didn't, I didn't actually work my way through it because of the whole purpose of the book was, you know, the fear of actually doing something, the fear <laughs> yeah. of actually, I, I, you know, so um, it was, yeah, it's, it, it's hard. It, it's really good. The, the way it's worded it's just it's awesome and it's um it's ha right now with all everything that's going on in the world like and just having that pause to sort of reflect on my own life and where i've been with sort of comedy and just my own regular life and stuff and what's not been happening and where you know where i'm sort of stuck creatively uh this has been good to actually go back to and work through properly for the first time mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so um, there's yeah, so the couple of things yeah you mentioned the the main thing the big thing that uh, uh, th this book really has is the morning pages, which is every morning when you wake up before you do anything you write three pages, you don't edit you don't think about it you write and if you can't think of anything to write you just write I can't think of anything to write you know you just keep writing you, you, yeah. you um. It doesn't need, you don't look back on it, you don't judge yourself, but it basically is just like a, I guess it's a, a way of, uh, you know, just getting things that are on your brain off onto the paper, right? Yeah, like, I think, I think she calls it a brain drain. It's yeah. like taking all of the garbage and stuff that's just taking up space in your mind and putting it on the paper. When, uh, yeah. when I read, <clears throat> when I read The Artist's Way, um, when you gave it to me for my birthday a couple of years ago, I I don't think I, uh, yeah, I didn't finish the whole program either. I think I made it to maybe week six. Uh, but I did keep up with the morning pages, even when I stopped reading the chapters each week and doing the other assignments. I kept up with the morning pages. And uh, it you don't realize how powerful they're going to be until you, until you keep up with them. And you realize that, like, that's a huge tool, just the morning pages. Even if like you couldn't get yourself to do anything else in the book, if you could just get yourself to stick to morning pages, that would be like a huge benefit to your life. That, yeah, that's that's really the big takeaway is doing the, I, I, I'll be honest, I've been struggling to do them every day. Um, it's, it, it's, it's one of those things where like, I'm not, you know, a routine and getting up and I don't know about any, like, you know, I, I've always struggled with getting up and thinking, okay, what's the first thing I do, mm -hmm. right? And even though, like, the first, it's right beside my bed, I just need to write. There's some part of me that just, like, that resistance of not wanting to do it. It's been a struggle, but as soon as I do it, I'm like, oh, this is great. It really, like, wakens you up. It really kind of, like, gets you, gets your brain going. And also, you can kind of see what it is that's going on in your mind, even though you think about it. Once you see it on paper, like anything that's going on in your mind, things about your career, relationships, or anything that's gone with it, this is a good time to do it, especially during these times as well. It's, um, you can, once you see something on the page, kind of starts making a bit of sense to you, or things 
that you're kind of wanting to do or wanting to do your life sort of start taking shape you, you, you kind of get to see a pattern um yeah so that's been that's been good um so then th th this book is like so the end of the first week they give you tasks um so there was a couple of things i wrote down about the first week uh that i was interested to share if you don't yeah sure so, so there's there's some great quotes there's some great it's, it's very quotable stuff but like you know the, the thing that I, that I was taking the first note I wrote down was progress, not perfection. Yeah. And that's the thing that blocks people. I think most creatively, especially me is like, say you want to take on a, uh, I don't know anything, a, a, any sort of project and you just want the end product and you want it to be this perfect thing. And it's not, and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta make an agreement with yourself that it's going to be, Terrible. I, I actually Julia Cameron, who was who wrote this book, was on the Russell Brands podcast recently, and she said, you know, you can't judge yourself by your early work. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, she, you know, I think she taught students and she asked George Lucas to sh to share with them uh, his early uh, <laughs> his early movies, and they were garbage. Yeah, you know, and you know, so. Um, you can't judge yourself because you know once you start pro you know once you start anything it's it's not going to be and that's it and that's the thing that stops you from doing it because you're like i, I don't know how this is how the, i can't see the perfect product so you just don't do it yeah which is i think i think it's also like i know for me uh there's sort of a fear of starting things because there's a like a lingering fear in the background of like what if i'm not actually good at this or like mm. what if i'm not actually as talented in this area as I imagine myself to be if I really tried. So yes. the fear of starting is compounded by this fear of like, if the if I try and it's not good, then that's proof that I'm not good at this. Uh, yeah. Whereas exactly. really it's like, if you're building any skill, if you're <clears throat> trying anything new, like it's almost unreasonable to think that you would be good at it right away or that the first thing that you would make in that area would be good. Well, that's the thing that she said, uh... So must, you must be willing to be a bad artist yeah. because you can't be a great artist until you've been a bad artist. Mm -hmm. And that was something that's really interesting because I think, yeah, we, we, all, we all like the idea of uh, or whatever life we try and shape for ourselves, but we don't, we don't sort of uh, like, like the idea that we're going to be bad at something right away. You know, like, you know, you can't go to the gym and get ripped on your first visit. You know, it's going to yeah. suck and you're going to hate, you're going to get confused about how the machines work and, you know, but if you don't, if you don't keep going, nothing's going to change. So it's going to make things worse, you know? So, um, there was, what else? There was, uh, yeah. So like, she's like, yeah, she says this is, this is something that was really interesting for me. She said, we are blocked because we wish to be safe. Yeah. And that's something that I've actually been talking about with my therapist recently. This book has actually been in line with that because even though, you know, I, I'm doing some lot of sort of like inner child work with my therapist mm -hmm. talking about the person inside me is kind of blocking me from, and these parts of my body, these parts of me that are all different parts of me are wanting me to be safe and they don't want me to, you know, so it's, so, so that's why, yeah, so it sort of blocks you, but, you, there's a real comfort in that safety of just not trying I guess yeah it's true well like any most of the time if you if you really dig at anything that's holding you back or any behavior or instincts that you have that are getting in your way they're usually things that at one point served a purpose right yeah. like things that at one point kept you safe uh, gave you some kind of security and then they just aren't serving you in that way anymore. Yeah. But, but like the parts of yourself that, that you judge, the parts of yourself that are keeping you from doing what you actually want to do, they're not yeah. trying to hold you back. They're, they're usually well-intentioned if you try to think of them as like a separate part of yourself. They're, they're trying to serve you. They're trying to keep you safe. Uh, they're trying to save you from embarrassment. Uh, but th they just don't need to be doing that work for you anymore. <laughs> So it's like yeah. the part the part of yourself that wants to keep you safe by keeping you from trying something new or keeping you from working on your on your art and your craft. Yeah. Uh, you just kind of have to tell it like it's okay. Like I appreciate that you're trying to keep me safe right now. I I know you're trying to do a certain job, 
I don't need you this week. <laughs> you can yeah. you can take a break. Please take your vacation days. Yeah, and that's I mean I think you know that that's one thing I learned in therapy is like kind of that those parts are for me anyway were parts of like the the, the part doesn't know that you're an adult. You know that you've grown past yeah. the, the trauma or the place that you were at that has blocked you from being the person you want to be. Uh, they still think you're. I don't know, whatever that trauma was, 13, mm-hmm. 12, 11. So they don't know you're grown, you're, you're grown, so you need to sort of show them. So that's what I've been doing in therapy as long as well as this book. So it kind of, uh, it, it's been it's been interesting. There was one thing that Julia said in this first week was talking about uh, personal blurts, the people that um, try and stop you from, or from um, having the life or being the person that you kind of want to want to be. And so what she, there was an exercise where you had to take, go from now and then go five years, five years chunks back in your life and think of the people who maybe said, hey, you can't be a comedian. Hey, you can't do this. This is stupid. This is mm. why, you know, not, not your voice, other people's, right? So I was, and that's the sort of similar thing, you know, the, the, what I do in the therapy as well. So, so I was working through these five year periods and it was, it was things that I forgot about, like, um, even just like, I remember, I remember like when I was like 11 or 12, I remember in high school, me and my friend used to write like, uh, like ca- funny cartoons, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, like, uh, and I remember this guy uh, found them in my bag and he just showed them to all the class and everyone mocked us for, and they, I think that actually back then they were like, everyone was mocking us because he thought it was gay. That's what he said. That was the thing back then. That was, <laughs> yeah. like, that was, the, that was a big insult back then. And uh, not in the PC world, but like, and, it, and then there was other things like when I used to play sports and I used to play a sport that wasn't popular in Scotland, like cricket, right? And then I remember a guy from school made fun of me. So I stopped playing. Mm-hmm. And, I, and the same with the comedy thing. I stopped the comedy thing. And that was when, I, and both of those things was when I was like 11. And these two guys were just bullies, right? And it was just, a, and I remember both incidents, and they're both just very passing incidents that have no, but I've stuck with me my entire life. Yeah, it's crazy to think like those people had no idea that they were la- like putting such a lasting mark on your life when they said these things and when they teased you about this stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I- and it, it's 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 made me, one one thing that's made me realize is 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 being very aware of what you say to other people too, mm-hmm. um, in general because you know, you know, the, the, this you know you can say one thing to one person and it really just sticks with you for your life and you don't even know so yeah. you you got to really approach everyone with sort of like a kindness with you know kindness yeah yeah um so going on the first week so one thing she did uh was get you to write 10 affirmations and positive beliefs about yourself um and i love an affirmation yeah um and so i did that and i should and you, you know I, I did a similar thing on your i think your live show one time doing that um you know that i deserve love and happiness thing mm-hmm. i do that every day but it was a similar thing but i did 10 different things and as i write them and it's it you know, it's so it's so it's so silly that you don't even recognize these positive things in your life that you actually do that. So I've written down, I'm like, oh yeah, I am all these things. Why yeah. do I think I'm not? You know? And then I realized that like when I was doing the personal bullet thing, it's like it's not really me, it's usually something else or some other people that don't even matter in your life or people that you, you for some reason you want to please and and actually yeah, the, the, the voices in your head that are putting you down are so often not you <laughs> it's no. it's usually someone else's voice and they're not true you know and it doesn't matter right and this is they actually in uh, in actually in week two they go on about that uh, a little bit more where uh they talk about um let me see if i can find the uh the page they talk about crazy makers that's what they call them mm. crazy makers who are um you know people who are uh you know, the, the, try and like uh, create drama in your life. They're toxic. Um, who are narcissistic. Who want it all to be about them. Who really like take all your energy away from yourself. Um, mm. And you know that was a huge part of my life too. You know, like especially like when you're drinking and partying, and 
you, you think that these people that are like narcissistic, like popular people, whatever, the, the attention seekers, for some reason, there's part of you that wants to please them, be part yeah. of their group for some reason, and realizing that, 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 you know, these people don't really matter. It's like be, being true to yourself is the main takeaway, you know, but it's so hard to, it's easy to say that, but it's so hard to actually. Mm-hmm. Hard to put into practice. Yeah, especially if you're not that that person, and um, so that was that was interesting. And so the the the, the tasks on week one were quite uh, it was it was quite interesting. Uh, there was things so so um, she she wanted you to make the pause uh, the blurts that people say the things that they say the uh, the negative things into positives. Um, so that that was good. Did that, and then you're like, oh yeah, just the simple changing of something into a positive affirmation really adjust your mindset mm-hmm. and but but i will say that because my skeptical negative almost scottish upbringing is like <laughs> it, it it really but, but that's the true thing like the environment where i came from especially is, is very like that you know and to to keep it from to, to you turn things positive but then it so quickly just goes back into the negative so but I think the more you have these affirmations and the more you work on the positive self, the more you do these morning pages, slowly, and that's what she says, slowly you'll even just be like, because at first you think to yourself, oh, well, I had a good day. I had some positive things, mm-hmm. but that's not going to last. You know, that's what your skeptical brain says. Oh, maybe I had a good week. Or maybe this person or that opportunity came into my life. Oh, it was just luck, you know? Yep. Um, and that's, again, it's uh because you don't feel like you're deserving of something so again with doing the 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 morning pages and these affirmations you slowly you work these sort of almost like micro progressions of slowly building yourself into a more positive mindset Mm -hmm. well yeah that was one thing that i found about the morning pages is like with the negative stuff because you're just supposed to be dumping whatever's taking up space in your mind and so often that stuff is the negative like rain cloud kind of thoughts right and because you're doing them every morning like I think she even says this like you can only write something down so many days in a row before you're like okay I'm sick of this yeah so if the same negative thoughts are clouding up your brain and you're writing them down in your morning pages after a few days of writing down this negative stuff that you're playing on a loop when seeing it on the page day after day you're like it no this isn't true like, I don't actually believe this. Like, why am I spending so much of my mental time and letting so much of this take up space in my mind? Well, here's something interesting that's happened to me during this uh, quarantine um, is, it, you know, I, I'll be honest, the first month or so was pretty hard because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm on my own and away from my community and my whole life just sort of like sort of ended abruptly and blah, blah, blah. But uh, and like most people, but I really, it, 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 you know, it, it really sort of hit me hard. And, but then as I sort of was like, well, this is the reality as it is. And I just need to be okay with it. And for the first time, really, I think in my adult life, you know, cause I drank a lot, you know, in my, in my early days. And, and then even when getting sober, I was so attached to like social media that like, I didn't have, I didn't actually sit and think to myself what do I want to do mm-hmm. what do I like what do you know not think about hey how do I want to present myself to this person um and because everyone's trapped in their house we're on yeah, a very it's only like, you yeah so it's, it's only, only you there's, there's there's nothing so you're kind of forced to be like oh I can need to get used to being okay with myself but also like who is myself I never really discovered that really, even though I kind of thought I did, but what I realized was a lot of stuff I was doing pre-quarantine was not for me. You know, Mm -hmm. comedy-wise, I was like, I'm not writing jokes for myself. I'm not hanging out with the people that I want to be hanging out with, but it's not for myself. It's for And and just like like the the projects I I thought I wanted to do were, they're not for me. They're for what I think what other people will like or something, right? So I realized that, so sitting alone was hard and mm. it was it was difficult and it's still it's still not easy but like i realized this like after all this sort of stuff 
you know, everyone sort of starts coming out and everyone sort of starts getting back to uh, uh, whatever vague sense of normality it'll get to. Yeah. Um, I've kind of just been like, well, it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing or what they're thinking about me. And it's more like, hey, what do I want to be doing? Do that. And then, you know, just, you know, well, it doesn't, who, who gives a fuck? I mean, it's just like, <laughs> I just like don't care anymore about other people's opinions or what people think. And yeah, I think like before this, you know, you're, you don't realize how much you're, trying to frame like oh who does this person want me to be what do like what do other people want from me what should I be doing and then now that we're in this time where there's nobody around to be judging you in a positive way or a negative way there's just nobody around to make judgments no. now it's like who do I want to be what do I want to do and and I think that's I think everyone is sort of I feel like you know, obviously, you know, to be sensitive to people that might be going through the being ill or having a hard time mm -hmm. during this, but like if you're not, which is, you know, you're just, you know, um, I feel like a lot of people, I, you've noticed on social media, people are going through waves of different things, but I've noticed that people are now like starting to do, discovering things that they used to do when they were younger, enjoying this, enjoying hanging yeah. out with your family, speaking to friends slowing down resting just enjoying life a bit better and realizing that all the other stuff it doesn't matter do you mean like it's you know trying to get money and trying to get this and that and and hanging out with people that don't have any you know that are not uh, you know encouraging you or whatever and people are i think i think for the most part people are sort of like for, i mean they're i guess they're frustrated because they can't get to the store or whatever but even then like people are like I've noticed for myself, I'm like, I spend a lot of time just wasting time buying yeah. things or being in coffee shops and, and and I'm getting a real joy of like discovering, oh, I like cooking again. Mm -hmm. I thought of, a, I, I, I want, I, you know, there's a business that I want to launch that I've been really excited about. Um, I've thought about comedy stuff that I want to do. It's not what I was doing before. Yeah. Um, I feel actually like, I feel I, I know it's weird. It's just happened in the last few weeks, but I feel the most confident, self-assured I've spelled my entire life. That's wonderful. I know, right? But like, it's it's taken an entire global pandemic. Yeah. For me to realize that. But sometimes, but you know, like, you know, I think sometimes out of like really bad situations, that's when these things happen, I guess. Absolutely. Like, uh, yeah, when I think back to the periods in my life where I've experienced the most like personal growth and development it was always following something that was objectively bad like rough times in my life were followed by periods of real growth i think it, it pushes you in a way so right now we're kind of going through this collective experience of like a love trauma basically mm. and uh so it's it's pushing us towards something better i think yeah um, I, I think so too. I'm, you know, this, I mean, it's awful, right? But like, I do feel that this, you know, even like, I, I, this is, this is kind of funny, but I was talking about this last night on a comedy show I was doing. Um, even just like, you know, when you're at the grocery store and people, like people are trying to put their stuff on the conveyor belt, well, you're putting your stuff on the conveyor belt and there's no room. That's gone. And that's a good thing. Like we did not have to be hmm. like, what's that sense of urgency you know like let's let's give people room let's chill yeah. out you know no, like that, that's yeah, a there's very no, simple there's no rush very simple thing but like yeah. or but even and you know um, I, I mean i'm not really sure how this will pan out but like the like no one can now argue against things like climate change animal agriculture fossil fuels all that kind of stuff like people that are it's this is why we're here all this the way that human beings have behaved is why we're in this state so i think i'm i'm hoping that this will wake people up to an idea that like oh the way that life has been so far has not been served any of us well mm -hmm. it's only served people greedy people um and it's not and we're just letting it happen I, yeah I hopefully it's the the same kind of thing where like 
this is pushing us into a period of personal growth and hopefully it extends to a period of societal growth uh, that like all of us having these little individual wake up calls right yeah. now, hopefully we have a, like a big collective wake up call to a lot of things as well. Well, that's how it works because if you start working on yourself and you start doing the things you want to do and putting that positive affirmations out into the world, then that goes to that energy goes to your friends, your employers, the people you're in. And then if everyone starts doing that, there's a trickle down effect. Mm -hmm. So all, you know, it all begins with, you know, the, the self, you know, and I, you know, I think a lot of people are doing that and, um, yeah. And, and this book is, as I say, this book is exactly what this is, you know, as well. So again, it's come into my life at a very good time. And this, it, you know, one thing I really like about this book is it's full of like really great quotes from like famous people. Um, that, I, but um, this one, I just saw them. This was from someone called Shakti Gawain. I have no idea who that is. So I apologize. <laughs> That's probably someone very famous, but I don't know who it is. But um, it says, every time you don't follow your inner guidance, you feel a loss of energy, loss of power, and a, a sense of spiritual deadness. Mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's, uh, that, yeah. So, it, yeah, so, I mean, this is, yeah, this book is, this book is great. It's, um, I feel like everyone should do it. It doesn't matter if you're a creative person. I mean, we're all creative people mm -hmm. in some sort of sense, but I, I it's, I, I also think like, you know, as I say, it's very similar to sort of 12 step program, which I think is good for people in general, just to take stock of their lives and yep. think about what they're doing. And like, no, I, I, I feel like a lot of people, I certainly, if, when, when this happened, I looked back at my life and I thought to myself, had this, have this virus killed us all in the next few years, would I be happy of how I lived my life up until this point? And the answer was no, not mm -hmm. at all. I'd been really not being genuine to myself so what I'm excited about is working my way through this book and actually now progressing and living more you know mm -hmm. yeah I think like it, uh, what you said about like this would be valuable for anybody regardless of whether or not they're creative if you're not an artist you might get like some of the que questions in the book each week and stuff might not be useful to you but I think that the at the very least the morning pages are good for anyone there's also just something about like i i know a lot of people like regardless of whether or not they're creative might keep a journal you know um but there's something different about the morning pages as opposed to a journal and there's something about doing it in the morning mm -hmm. something about doing these pages first thing during the day it kind of like frees up space in your brain for the rest of your day well, your mind hasn't given you time to stop you from uh, blocking yourself is basically mm -hmm. what it is because you wake from your sleep you start writing because if you get if you wait till later in the day your brain will be like don't write that that's not what you want to say this is yeah this is make it look make it look good and, and so it's you know so when you wake up you write that there's no there's no filter mm -hmm. um i will say you, like yeah morning morning pages are so much more personal than any other journal that I have kept. Mm. Like if someone were to find a book of my morning pages, that is a mortifying thought to me because there are things that even you necessarily like don't think are true. You know, like it's just the garbage stuff that takes up space in your brain. So it's all of the, all of the stuff that you would least want another person to see or know that you think yeah um, and yeah. definitely not in the first few weeks anyway i would i would happily let anyone read it because honestly if they were it's <laughs> crazy it's insane but like honestly like if you if you read that and you were to you would and you didn't and you sort of wanted to make fun of me or something it'd be like well i mean what you're projecting yourself there right you know because mm -hmm. at least i'm trying at least i'm being run vulnerable at least i'm trying to figure out who i am and and try and be my honest self because like as i say we're i didn't do this and so many people are not living the lives that they want to be living so that's why people are angry negative mm -hmm. um crazy violent abusive alcoholics addiction uh, have addiction issues for all those reasons so mm -hmm. like 
there's, I, I, that's another thing now that I realize now is like I don't have any, I, I, no shame. I don't, I don't give a fuck anymore. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I really don't. I'm like, and I don't mean that, and I'm like, I'm just going to do whatever I feel. I just mean like, as in, like, I'm not going to censor myself for the want of pleasing someone else, you know? Yeah, like, there's, there's no point in holding yourself back or like judging yourself for the purpose of keeping yourself safe, like you said. It's like, it's like people who are like, oh, I'm going to break up with them before they get the chance to break up with me, you know? Like, it's like, oh, if I judge myself first, if I put myself down and tell myself all these negative things about myself, then that keeps me safe because I got to it first. Like, it's not like enough, I didn't give another person a chance to judge me because I had already judged myself. Um, but yeah. that's not serving you at all. <laughs> no, no. And also, like, you know, if, if you're... If, you know the the people that you worry about these people these imaginary people or might be real people mm -hmm. if if, they, if if that is going on in your head and they are a problem or you you know they shouldn't be in your life yeah and so the, you know, they're crazy makers as the book the crazy makers it. right yeah. and the the fear of letting them go is is hard because maybe you're used to it because for for example um you know i always for a long time dated the most toxic women who, mm -hmm. who were in the same boat as me but we just kind of found the same energies but they were never and it just led to in, insanity and you know since i got sober I just, it never happened you know because it just you know does i wouldn't allow it you know so it's, yeah you have to you have to stop inviting those people in and you have to be unafraid of cutting ties with crazy makers who are already in your life yeah, like it, it, I think I think a lot of us can feel a sense of obligation to people who have been around for a long time even. Yeah. Right? Where you're like, "Oh, yes, this person adds drama to my life. Yes, this person is negative towards me, puts me down, makes me feel less about myself." But I've known them for so long and we've been friends for a really mm -hmm. long time or like things like that you feel a sense of obligation just because somebody's put in a lot of time in your life. Yeah. But really, I, I, it's I, like that that's not what's really important. That's no, keeping it's, people it's, in your life only who are adding value to your yeah. life Just and you who increase well, your happiness. I've definitely cut off a lot of people um, Me who are toxic and negative. Like it, it, it's just because I was just like, I don't need these people in my life. I just don't. So it just, it's weird. But then after you cut, you cut them off, you, you don't miss them. No. Anyone you think you might miss because you've known them for 10 years, but they're a dick. So mm -hmm. you cut them off. You're like, oh, actually, I I should have chucked that person out of my life a long time ago. Yep. And that's not to say like that those people didn't mean something to you or that they didn't at some point add something to your life, right? Like, yeah. no one no one is all bad, right? Yeah. So that I'm like sure there was a, a yes, yeah, sure. I'm yeah. I'm I'm positive. Like we've we've all uh, filled that role in somebody's life being some kind of negative or, or toxic person in some way. Um, mm -hmm. And if I was that to anybody else, then I'm glad for them that I'm not in their life anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I, I think going back to this book, I think, um, and I, I guess re relating to what's going on as well with this, this time in our life is it, it really is important to really take stock of yourself and really figure out stuff because you want to be living the happiest, most you know, creative life that you can make for yourself. And it is possible to do whatever it is you set out to do, but you really do need to do the work. Mm -hmm. And it's hard work, and a lot of people want to avoid it. And, you know, even when I mean this book, I'm like, I, like, I don't want to read it. I'm like, I don't want to do this thing. I don't want to do this task. Like, there's tasks in this book, right? One of the tasks, like, I said, what's one of the tasks? Is like, um, write out a story, you know, about the experience of how someone said something negative to you, right? And I know what that story is in my head. It's like, I feel like I don't want to write it. I'm like, ah, I don't want to, I don't want to bring the pain of that memory back or whatever. Yeah. But, or I'm just being lazy. And it's not even, actually, I realized it's like, it's not even laziness. It's just because this is one thing I realized my therapist this week was um, a lot of my bad habits isn't, it's not because I want it, it, the reason why sometimes I don't deal with the bad habits is not because I, uh, the bad I 
I want the bad habit is because of the pain of what caused that bad habit. Mm -hmm. The reason why I do stuffing, there's a there's a painful memory or trauma behind it possibly that was, that I don't want to deal with. It's not that I, I can't get rid of the the bad habit. It's just I don't want to think about the thing. Yeah. But that's where the that's where the true growth is though. Uh, yeah, well, like you have to with, to get to the root of those things and to change things <clears throat> in yourself. A lot of the times, you have to get pretty messy. Like none of us want to to dig stuff up that's unpleasant, but that's how you change things, right? Like if you're planting a garden, like you you have to get dirt on your hands. Like you have to you have to dig up what's already there to plant new things. Yeah, long, make sure to wash your hands after as well. But that's, of course, uh, yeah, for at least yeah, 20 that's, seconds. <laughs> that's, no, but it's, it, it's true. And um, I, I definitely, um, the, the one thing that I, I guess this, this whole experience has taught me as well is it's very important to learn how to be okay in the present moment. That's mm -hmm. my big thing because, you know, I, you know, I was very depressed for a long time there and I really in this time, I think it's kind of gone or put, say because it's really because I've been sort of working on the past stuff it doesn't bother me as much anymore yeah because I work on it and I, I tackle it it doesn't linger with me and because I don't know what the future is going to look like and no one does I don't I try not to think about it too much so I just think what am I doing now and what can I be doing mm -hmm. uh, it keeps me very present and it keeps me really into what I'm doing like enjoying a task like even I, I wrote I wrote stuff the other day about mental health. It was pretty heavy read. I don't want anyone to. It's not for posting, but as I was re, as I was writing it, I just felt compelled to write it as I was sort of coming. Mm -hmm. I was taking myself off my medication that I'd been taking, and I, I wrote it. And after I wrote it, as I was writing, I was like, "Oh, I really enjoy writing. I really enjoy this process." But what, what would happen is every so often I'd be like, "I need to check my phone. I can't. You know, I don't want to deal with this." Yeah. But then I go back to it. And then it's like meditation. It's like, okay, that thought's come in. We just go back to the writing. Mm -hmm. And then I, went, I go back to writing. And it, 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 so I've discovered that. And even just like things like cooking because the restaurants aren't open. You know, it's just. Yeah, that's been a big one for me too. Is like enjoying my food more, enjoying the process of making my food more. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoying eating it. Enjoying, mm -hmm. you know, and, and getting healthier too because you're not you know you're making the choice to for what you're eating and um you, you learn what you like and what you don't like and because a lot of times when you go to a restaurant you just take whatever's on the menu and then you, you don't even take stock of what you're eating for your diet you're just mm -hmm. eating stuff like i realized the first few weeks when i was just eating my regular thing i was like all i eat is coffee and bread yeah sugar. <laughs> that's all i'm eating because that's why i go to like coffee shops and just have a muffin coffee mm -hmm. and a night pint of ice cream you know and I'm like, oh yeah, that's why I feel fucking weird. I've not eaten anything nutritious ever, yeah. you know. I, say, I think, of, yeah, for me, I've noticed that too. Is like, uh, because there's so little going on right now, uh, I'm checking in with myself a lot more and paying more attention to how I feel each day, like physically. Mm. And then yeah. because so so little happened in the day, I'm. It's easier for me to look at what's contributed to the way that I'm feeling so like if I'm feeling good I can check in with myself and be like oh I'm feeling really good today like what did I eat today I ate these things today okay so I know that those things make me feel good like I exercised a little okay so I know that exercise like that felt good or if I'm feeling really garbage it can be like oh all I did was eat pie all day okay that's why <laughs> yeah and, and you know what because because sometimes when you have when the regular life was back, you don't have the time or you don't, you can't. Exactly. You, you can't don't check, it. you don't check in. Maybe I, time. maybe I feel like garbage and I ate pie all day, but like, there's so much going on that I'm just like, Oh, I feel like garbage, whatever, go to sleep, reset next day. Like I don't check in with myself about why I don't try to make any adjustments mm -hmm. for the following day. Uh, it's usually just like, now I have the time. Yeah. It feels like I didn't drink enough water. Yeah, <laughs> just but you know it's you know, amazing how much of the time the problem is water. that you didn't drink enough water. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all, pretty much all the problem all the time. But yeah, I, well, you know what I did the other day? Is I made a bunch of pies and I I went to some friends and I dropped off. I dropped I, four different friends 
I cycled to the east end of Toronto, and I cycled my way back all the way to the west end of Toronto, and I spoke to four different people. I dropped them off the door, and then we had a little distance chat. Mm -hmm. And as I was cycling, I was like, oh, yeah, I love to move. Yeah. <laughs> and that thought, I was like, oh, that was what was wrong with me. I haven't moved. Mm -hmm. My body needs to move so much. You know, that's that's one thing I realized. I was like, I, if I don't move, I, 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 it really affects the mental health, right? But also, like, then I saw my friends, and then you talk. And you're just like, oh, just just talking to someone, just yeah. the simple the the simple key things that you don't take you don't think about. You're like, H did I did I talk to someone today? Have I eaten something healthy? Have I moved? Mm -hmm. And if they, and usually the answer is probably no, and that's why you feel bad. Like even when the weather was bad when this first started, the, the first day of the sun came out, I sat outside, and I was so depressed, Tracy. I was so depressed mm -hmm. for those weeks leading up to it. And I sat outside in the sun, and after five minutes, I was like, oh, I, nothing, none of that matters. I feel great. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, the sun, that's a big one. That's a big one. I wish that we were able to be outside all year long, because I'm realizing, especially in this, like when there are nice days, what a difference to my happiness 30 minutes of sunshine makes. Oh, yeah. It's, it's crazy the amount of, uh, even just being outside, even when the sun, I mean, the sun's sort of, always around but just even being outside is like just moving and being outside or just being just not being sat still in a sort of false environment which is like staring at your phone or computer mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean and, and they're they're and this is the thing they're so they're, they're such basic things they're so so obvious when you think about them drink water yeah. sleep well i bought these plants these plants just bring me this this I bought sheets for my bed. Like I know they're so mm -hmm. stupid, but like just those it just feels nice just to to do it and have some nice stuff and But usually and, it is those like obvious things that will make a difference. It's like mm -hmm. you know, like cliches are cliches for a reason. Yeah. Right? Like the advice that you hear all the time and it just kind of becomes background noise because it yeah. like yeah, yeah. I know, I know I'm supposed to drink enough water, that kind of thing. When you actually put it into practice and just do these little really basic things, like, did you eat a nutritious meal today? Did you drink enough water? Like, did you sleep yeah. enough, but yeah. not too much? Yep. Like, did you talk to a person? It's yep. just and these little things. If you can just keep up with the little stuff, like, it that, will you, make your mental health so much stronger. And do you know what that is? That is, um, the happiness is does not come from anything external. It's all internal. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Like food, you know, getting your sunshine on your body, sleeping well, you know, just, you know, it, it doesn't come from buying something. It doesn't mm -hmm. come from eating garbage. It doesn't come from consuming garbage. It doesn't yep. come from negatives. It comes from checking in on your own what's good for you. I think there's uh, also a, like, like we – obviously have this in our culture a real divide between our mind and our body <clears throat> mm -hmm. where we feel like they're completely separate things and function completely individual from each other mm -hmm. uh, but really we know that the mind and the body are so so connected uh, mm -hmm. so it stands to reason that if you're taking good care of your body then your mind is going to be better like oh. I can't even count the number of times that I've been like, oh, I'm like, I'm feeling really emotional. I'm really, I'm really upset. I'm really irritable or like, I'm really sad or really sensitive. And the answer is just that I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just, it, I, I'll, but I'll create all of these stories about why this emotion is happening in my head in the moment. It won't go to hunger first. Right. I'll be like, oh, I'm feeling really irritable. Like why, why am I so angry? Am I angry? about this thing is it because uh, like th this person said this thing to me or like i'll try and spin a story because our brain likes stories as to why this feeling is happening why am i sad right now oh well look for reasons to be sad in your life okay pick one of those and assign it to this feeling that i'm having right now when really the answer is just i need a snack <laughs> i'm yeah. not upset about anything i just one need a snack that, an old therapist of mine um said to me that's there's four things that if you're ever feeling like that is to check in it's like are you lonely 
are you hungry? Are you tired? Are you only un hungry, tired, and something else? I can't remember. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, if you check in, you usually find out that it's one of those things. Yeah. It's not, it's like, hey, you know, if you're feeling like upset, it's like, oh, I haven't spoke to someone today. Mm -hmm. That's all it is, you know? It's, it's, it's really, uh, it's really taking the small steps to look after yourself. And, and again, this is, it's going back to this book is just taking the time to, Hey, what do you, what do you, what do I want from my life? Not, not what other people think that I should have from my life. What do I want to do? Like, you know, there, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's an exercise in this book. It said, if there's, um, let's see, um, if you had to live five imaginary lives, right. That you could do anything, right what would they be and don't think about it just write it as it comes out and then I, I i wrote them out and most of them were stuff that i'm trying to be right now to be this just like and then i was like oh yeah i can do this stuff it's like oh, yeah these are and then it remains and then there's some stuff that i forgot about and then it's like oh it reminds me of a uh, something that i used to like that i didn't ever pursue for some reason mm -hmm. um and yeah and it, it's like but you, you, the lies you tell yourself that you can't do these things is you're too old, you're you're too, you know, you, you get too many, you don't have enough money, you can't, you know, no one's going to like, you know. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. They're all and, lies. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's crazy how, you know, how we allow the external life to, to affect our own lives and we don't live genuine lives because of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Also, if, if you really think about, like, it, if there's something that you want to pursue, if you think about the worst case scenario of what if I try and I fail, the worst case scenario is usually not that bad. No, no. Right, and like with think... creative stuff, it's like, like, oh, you you want to write? You want to make comedy? You want to write a one person show? Like, what's the worst case scenario if it doesn't go well? Like, yeah. your life's still fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nothing, nothing terrible happened. We also might find that I found that like, if you if you you're like I want to do this and you start doing that, you might also find that actually that's not what I want to do because yep. that's something I thought I should be doing. But like because I had an I actually had an idea for a one man show and I realized that no, I I actually don't want to do that. That's not what I want to do. But that's what I thought that I wanted to do because I saw other people doing it. And I thought that mm -hmm. that's what I wanted to do too. And I think that that's why I never really wrote it either because I just didn't want to do it you know yeah yeah i think I, there's really something to um trying to really focus in on your sort of like internal compass mm -hmm. and like what am i what do i feel motivated to do because that's probably the thing that i actually want to do things that tasks that you assign yourself based on a sense of obligation or things that you think that you want to do because you're actually doing them for other people like with you with the one man show it's like oh i see other people doing this i'm supposed to be doing this uh yeah. you're gonna have a real lack of motivation you're not gonna be able to get yourself to actually sit down and do it because it's not a desire that actually came from your heart right yeah um so the things that you're being pulled towards from your heart those are the things that you actually want to do if you yeah. actually wanted to write that show then it would have been a lot easier to do for sure, yeah, and maybe I will, but that's I just realized that that's not something that I want to do at the moment, so yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I yeah, and I mean i I definitely i mean you know i i I had to like really look at myself after I stopped drinking, and I don't think a lot of people and because I had to do it, that's why you know I'm here right now, but i I encourage anyone who you know even if you're not like you know having an addiction issue or mental health stuff, if you're just a regular whatever is still. It's, this book is still worthwhile mm -hmm. to go through because I think you'll see parts of your life that you might realize that are not serving you, and that might not be that might not be creative. That might be personal things like health or relationships, you know. And and then once you tackle them, you realize you, you can improve your life and you can mm -hmm. do better stuff. And like, yeah, just as a general message to everyone, like. Don't be afraid to get messy for a while. Like, <clears throat> don't be afraid to get dirt on your hands planting planting the garden. You know. Yeah, and one thing uh, is one thing that COVID has shown us all, and by watching like even celebrities in their houses, no one's better than you. No one's better. No one's doing anything better than you. Everyone's in the yeah. same fucking. 
everyone's doing, like everyone's just you know some people are just like you're no different from anyone else that's what i'm trying to say is like you have this idea of like oh that person's well they're famous so they're obviously some sort of talent and i'm not that yeah like you know? that i'm not special that person's special I, all that person did was believe in themselves to do it and they mm -hmm. did it and that's the only difference between you, you doing something with your life is having the belief that you can do it and actually continue to do it if you believe that you can do something and you do your best towards it you'll get to where you want to be yeah no no questions yeah so that's where I'm at now. yeah oh i love that yeah um, Hopefully the world doesn't end because I'm ready to go. Because <laughs> you're ready to take it on. <laughs> yeah, I know. This would that would be that would be uh, yeah. Man, this hour has flown by. We're almost out of time. Are we um, done? Almost. Uh, so as you know, we end by me giving the guest a genuine compliment. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I could give you many compliments. As you know, you're one of my very best and closest friends. That's true. Yeah. I love and adore you. You're there to give me a push when I need a push. I will always be there to give you a push when you need a push. Mm -hmm. um, I think something that I want you to know about yourself is that you, despite what you might think sometimes, you can actually do anything that you put your mind to. Mm -hmm. uh, you are not lacking in any kind of drive uh, to accomplish your goals. It is completely in your hands. Uh, you And regardless of what you look at in your life to be evidence, you've proven that you are a person who can accomplish what you set your mind to. You can stick to stuff. Uh, you can create the life for yourself that you want. You've proven that to yourself with drinking. Yeah. Right? That's an extremely difficult thing to stick to and get done and a big giant shift to make in your life and you did it and your life is better for it. And so you can use those parts of yourself to serve you in the future. I believe that anything that you want to do, you can, uh, even if it's hard, uh, I don't feel like you don't have the tools to accomplish everything that you want. That, that would be what I would say to you. Thank you very much. And, you know, I, I think it's, uh, if you'd have said that to me a while ago, I'd be like, yeah, no, I don't believe that. But I actually genuinely believe that now. So thank you. Um, That's good. Yeah, I, 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 I definitely, it's, it takes, it doesn't matter. It just takes time to, it's taken me this long to sort of believe that in myself. And mm -hmm. it's, I never, I never thought of much of myself for most of my life. So if anyone else is a sort of, Feeling in a similar sense, just know that like I was a fucking deadbeat loser for a long time. So it's possible if you're you're willing to do it. And like I, I actually feel good about stuff coming up in the future. So uh, yeah. thank you for saying that. Um, we could also mention I have a really nice tracksuit top on as well. That's, yes, you do. Right, right? <laughs> yeah, you're looking real sharp, like a like some kind of gangster over here. <laughs> Yeah. And you yeah, yeah, and you yeah. have a wicked mohawk going right now. <laughs> I, I have shades, but I have a ring light. You'll see the ring light in them too much. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. I don't want to see people see the ring light. I don't want people to think I'm a YouTuber. Yep, yep. You your influencer, John Mostyn. I am an influencer. <laughs> Follow <laughs> me at Mostyn Comedy if you want to be influenced. Um, yeah, that's by, right. And if you live in Toronto, I'll be going to be selling uh, vegan pies soon. So, uh, you know, uh, get at me. I'm just going to plug myself here. Yeah, eat John's tasty pies. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Um, yeah. No. Yeah, is that the hour? Is, that, is there more time? What's, what's going on? Well, I think we're about out of time. So, uh, listeners, go be nice to yourself. Maybe write some morning pages. And remember that love is everywhere. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>